Good afternoon, everyone. With the IPCC Paris talks just a week away, headlines are flashing. Global warming threatens iconic snow leopard. 14% of the animal's habitat has been covered by research. Case in point, Afghanistan, potential habitat. They don't even know where these things are. North of Mongolia, into the Russian Federation, suitable habitat, numbers unknown. Polar bears, no different. That brown area you see, deficient data. They haven't studied them enough to even know the population in there. International Union for Conservation of Nature just coming out with the all-time record polar bear population. Yet National Geographic says they're going to decrease significantly. None of the IPCC climate models are even remotely close to the observations of what's happening. There's been no warming on our planet for 18 years, yet we're being forced in Paris globally to sign treaties that are going to destroy the economy all to save one one hundredth of a degree. The majestic snow leopard being used as a pawn by the IPCC. Get ready for more headlines like this. Global warming threatening iconic snow leopard in the run-up to Paris next week. Be aware that only 14% of this animal's habitat has ever been covered by research. So when we see reports by the World Wildlife Federation claiming that the snow leopard population has declined by 20%, you might ask yourself, how do they know that when only 14% of the animal's range has ever been covered by research? The vanishing snow leopard. Nice graphic, but how do they come to that conclusion with such little data? Case in point, Afghanistan. Snow leopard, potential habitat. They know it could exist, but they don't know the numbers. Northern Himalaya range, including Tibet, Mongolia, and the Russian Federation, Kazakhstan. Snow leopard range, but the research just isn't there to quantify the numbers. They do have some sightings by country. This is what it's broken down as. China actually has the most, believe it or not. Nice article here in Kunso talking about over 1.7 million square kilometers has never been reached, mapped, or researched to study this animal. Mongolia right in the center, Russian Federation to the north. The green there is the distribution, but there's no numbers. There's only been a few sightings, but those were in the 19th and 20th century confirmed. These are incredibly beautiful animals, but so little is known about them. I don't know how the IPCC can really come out and say that, you know, we're destroying this animal and it's disappearing when they don't even know how many animals there really are. Snow Leopard Trust spouting off IPCC warming three degrees by 2050. Are you kidding me? And five degrees by 2080. That is just a pure lie. I can't believe people even quote this kind of numbers when none of the observations even show such a thing. And these articles in the Snow Leopard Trust talking about 30% of snow leopard habitat may be lost. How can they know that? Here's a look at the IPCC models. The bottom blue squares and black circles is the actual observed temperature. All those other lines you see are models that are incorrect. I'll let you draw your own conclusion. If you're more of a numbers and table graph kind of person, this is the snow leopard population by country. It's a guesstimate at best. But you know what? Those snow leopards could sure use all this snow and ice and blizzards and record snows that are coming through the western United States up to two feet of snow in some places. Rare for this early in November to be blanketing this much of the Western United States. There's been so many snow records broken already just in the last week alone. Let's jump over to the polar bear. Another pawn being used by the IPCC. National Geographic coming out predicting a decline in polar bear populations across all the ecoregions in the Arctic. Everything's at risk. But you know what? They're using the sea ice projections from the IPCC. Let's take a look. Polar bear status report. Those darker gray areas, those are unknown, deficient data. 
This comes from the Canadian Ice Service showing the exact same thing, where they do have polar bear population measurements and quantified data. They're showing an increase to an all-time high since the 1980s for our polar bear population. And these are the specific research regions. So when you go into the Fox Basin or the Davis Strait, they have a specific population that lives in that area. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the record ice coming through. Davis Strait on the far right below Greenland. Look how much ice has just popped out of nowhere. That shows recovery. Back to the map. Look directly in the center at Fox Basin. That also covers Baffin Island, which is significantly cooling right now, showing an uptrend in ice per year. Let's go back again. We're going to look at Hudson Bay. And they had unusually long ice this year. Notice the amount over the average since the year 2000. If indeed the world is warming so much, there shouldn't be increasing ice in all these places. Close in view of actually where they do have polar bear data. And what you'll quickly notice and this graphic is since 2009 all the way to 2014 and 15 this year, those areas of deficient data have not grown in size. It remains the same. Those areas remain unstudied. So when you hear that the polar bear is vulnerable and endangered, that statement is wrong. And if you do like spreadsheet type data so you can see it a little bit more clearly, here you go. Take note of the cutest little logo you've ever seen, the Polar Bear International logo. Current trends of the world's populations. Notice where the deficient data is. That far outweighs any of the known data. And Polar Bear Science presenting a new paper published showing that only a 70% chance that polar bear numbers will decline by 30% by 2050. Yet, National Geographic states it is fact Project that all four ecosystems and ecoregions will have significant decreases in polar bear population. Now wait, that goes against everything I just showed you just a moment ago. And everything relies on the IPCC's projected models of warming in our climate, which have been wrong. This is 73 models. Not one is correct. These are the 19 U.S. climate models. Not one is correct. When we jump over to the overall world climate models of 90 different climate models, only two are correct out of 90. Yet the governments of the world continue to use faulty IPCC projections to write laws for our policy that govern our economy, shutting down our coal burning power plants. We need electricity for growth in the economy. There's been no global warming for 18 years. How can they possibly come out and try to write these new laws that are going to put billions of people into economic strife? If you look at the real numbers that are coming in Paris, the U.S. Clean Power Plan only reduces temperatures by one one-hundredth of a degree. Europe two one hundredths of a degree in their EU 2020 policy. That's just madness. And they can't even prove that CO2 is the driver of the climate. They never talk about solar variability. And to use hundreds of billions of U.S. dollars to stave off one one hundredth of a degree, that is purely political agenda to stop developing nations from developing any further, to lock you into your economic strata that you're in right now, to allow very little economic growth on this planet, to basically go back to feudalism, allowing a small group of rulers at the top to dictate how you live. I don't accept that. That is unacceptable in this day and age. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030, and I'll keep stories like these coming to you.